everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Eureka Rapid Clean Pro, specifically the model NEC 180. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature consisting of our user guide and manual, as well as our customer service and contact card. Next, you'll see we have our wall charger and power supply here. We have two accessories, a crevice tool and a hybrid crevice and brush tool. Next, we have our wall mount option with screws and anchors followed by our main vacuum body and tube right here. Metallic construction, I really like the color choice of this. It looks great, the white really pops with it. Next, you'll see our main brush roller, the Rapid Clean Pro branding on it, built-in LED lights. Here's a look at that brush roll with its bristles, and you'll see our cutouts and slots here for picking up larger debris. On the back, we have a clear see-through hose. This is nice in case you ever have any tangles or obstructions, and there you have a nice, easy way to see what's going on. Our two wheels. You'll see our clip to release to install the tube or remove. And then lastly, you'll see we have the main vacuum unit itself. Let's look at this in more detail. At the top of the vacuum unit, you'll see that we have all of our controls here, power, low, high, battery indicators, dust cup release, so we can pop this off to clean this filter and remove as needed. On this side of it, we can empty out the contents in there and clean all throughout. Take a peek with that removed. Then to install it back, just repeat that in reverse order and it snaps right back in place. On this side, you'll find a lock and unlock indicator there so we can twist this to get access to that filter to clean and replace as needed. And then just twist it back. 25.2 volts right there. On this side, looks like we got our battery charger a note to charge it fully for maximum suction power. Here's a peek at the other side. We'll look at it from the front on. Back side of it, product warning label, additional product info, and we have our wall mount option and adapter right there. Now let's get the vacuum set up. Set up simple and straightforward. Just choose the attachment you want to use and then connect it to the body in the main unit. So everything's only going to fit one way. So in this case, we're gonna line these two up and they'll snap right in, just like so. And now we can take the main unit, also only gonna fit one way, line it up, and they'll snap in place. Now we have successfully set up our vacuum. Let's try it out. First thing I wanted to do was show you how bright the built-in LED lights are. So we have all of our lights off here in the studio and we're gonna power on the vacuum. And you'll see the lights illuminated right there. Coming up to our remote control, we're able to see all the buttons on it. Definitely gonna be enough to highlight what's right in front of the center of this vacuum. I wouldn't say there's a lot of bleed over or diffusion for the sides, but again, right where you're aiming it at the very center, you'll be able to see in extra detail what you're vacuuming up. But I would like to see that even brighter in the future or adding a couple more LEDs so we get that full diffusion all throughout the front, not just the center. I was really excited when setting this vacuum up to see that the main brush roller snaps in place to keep the vacuum upright. But unfortunately, when I stood it upright, you'll see what happens here. It falls over, even though it locks in at the base, it's not able to support the weight of the main unit at the top. So I guess as consolation, if you take that off, this can stand upright on its own, but really disappointed that with that design, that it's too top heavy still, that it's gonna topple over. Now let's get cleaning.
so comparing unvacuumed carpet to vacuum carpet, you'll get a feel for the lines with this vacuum. It's definitely weak and they're very faint. All right, so we just finished our first clean. Let's take a look at the results. On the main brush roll, you'll notice on the bottom side, all of the tangled hair and carpet fibers that were picked up. So a lot of this is human hair. And then we have a long shag rug that typically always adds some threads into a brush roller like this. But pretty impressive the amount of hair that we picked up and it's already tangled on the brush. So just make sure that you're periodically checking, cleaning this and cutting everything away. Everything looks great here on our channel going up with that see-through tube, no obstructions there. And then looking at this side, you might notice we already have a lot of dirt and dust up at the top on the inside of the cover. Now let's move along to the main vacuum unit itself with our dust bin. Look at all that hair. Everything that's just packed in there, that's disgusting. So we're close to the max fill line. We still have some wiggle room on this side, but I'd say that's really full since this side is completely full and above that line. Look at everything in there. Gross. So first out, we have our heavy debris. We got some rocks and dirt and things like that. Some paper and trash. And then everything else is gonna be that really fine dirt and dust and pet hair. Disgusting. Can't believe, oh, that was super full. Look at all that. So tons of pet hair, tons of crumbs, everything you'd find around your house, you can expect to pick up with this vacuum. So how does the Eureka vacuum stack up against the competition? Let's go over a couple of key metrics. The first one I wanna talk about though is cost. This is great to tuck in your back of your mind as we go through all the rest of the specs to get a feel for the value with this unit, right? So first up, battery life measured in minutes, 40 minute runtime for this vacuum compared to the average of 51. Next, you'll see bin capacity measured in liters. We have 0.7 liters for this bin capacity compared to the average of 0.6. That's gonna be pretty standard here. It's just average. Next, rated power measured in watts. This has nothing to do with actual suction power. We'll look at those metrics later, but if you wanted to know the rated power in watts for this particular vacuum and its motor, it comes in at 150 watts compared to the average of 361. So that's where we're starting to see we are about half the average here, but we're also half the cost. So there's just certain things that are done to reduce costs. Next, we have our max CFM. This is one of the key indicators to help us have a good feel for how deep of a clean and good of a job this vacuum is gonna do with its suction. Also, this doesn't factor in per se the design of the brush roller. That's another area in a vacuum that can make or break your cleaning experience. So in this case, we measured CFM of 29, which is great to see that we're actually above the average tested of 26. The higher, the better, the more powerful your vacuum is. Next, we have our deep clean test. This test is done by embedding coffee grounds into carpet and measuring before and after the results that our vacuum cleaner is able to suck up. In this case, 100's the best possible score. The average is 94. Our particular Eureka vacuum scored 85. That's gonna be below average by about nine points, but I'd say still very respectable. Cause again, let's go back to the beginning. What did we tuck away? How much are we paying for this particular vacuum? And you'll see that we're not getting that complete 50% drop in performance, we're really close to that average, but we're not paying that much. Moving right along, we have our decibel test. This is where we set our vacuum on its highest suction setting and we measure the results to see how loud it is. So the higher the score, the louder your vacuum is. In this case, we're on the quieter side here at 76 decibels compared to the average of 86. So it's great to see that 10 decibel decline here. You want a lower score because that means your vacuum is running quieter. In the perfect world, you want a really quiet vacuum, but typically if your vacuum is running quieter, it's not going to be as powerful. That's not always the case, but typically what you'll see some of the really powerful top of the line cordless vacs will have a louder decibel test and readout due to the fact that they're more powerful. But in this case, we have a nice vacuum cleaner here with a respectable decibel range. Now let's talk about weight. This is measured in pounds. We're right at 5.3 pounds for this vacuum cleaner. Very lightweight, easy to use all around your house. I wouldn't expect any fatigue or anything like that while you're cleaning. And we're really, really close, just slightly above the average of five pounds. 
So where does that leave us with this Eureka vacuum cleaner? Well, let me share with you my final thoughts. First thing I wanna say is build quality is great. Love the design of it. The color looks nice. Our main brush roller with the Rapid Clean Pro on it does a good job on carpets. It leaves nice clean lines behind. So I always like seeing that. Even if it's just a mental thing that I feel like the carpets are cleaner because they look clean and they look like they're vacuumed. I like the LED lights, although I do wish they were a little bit brighter to diffuse that light across the whole cleaning area, not just concentrated in the center but I'm always, always grateful for LED lights on a vacuum. Typically on a budget friendly vacuum like this, that's one of the first features to go. Also, they did a good job for larger debris and object pickup. It's not perfect by any means. You'll still find yourself plowing, but it strikes that good balance between still giving you that nice seal and good suction power, as well as still being able to pick up larger objects. I think the biggest miss for this vacuum, in my opinion, is the fact that the whole thing can't support itself standing upright. I just find that so frustrating. It's really silly, especially because the base locks and this unit can. So if you want to quickly do like a handheld mode and you want to set this down, that's fine. That will be able to stand upright. But if you want to put this on and just quickly set it somewhere, you're going to have to lean it against a piece of furniture. I also think I'd like to see maybe a removable battery in the future for easier replacement and maybe the ability to, you know, swap some on or off. You could have a couple charged on standby, but overall for the price that you're paying, you definitely get what you pay for. But in this case, you're getting a little bit extra.